Okay. Okay. Well, good eve. Well, it, is it good evening? No, it's not good evening yet, but uh, it is a uh, good afternoon. I just want to uh, make sure that uh, everyone uh, can see the uh, page. Well, let me just take a moment here. It's taken a moment to load up. And I do apologize. Uh, Mimi, can you see it? Does the page show right now? It says you have started screen sharing, but it doesn't have a picture yet, just a, a black screen that says you've started screen sharing. Okay. It says your screen share is loading. Uh, can you see anything now? I just want to make sure. Yep. Med yep. I can see it. Fantastic. And I apologize for any sort of, uh, you know, uh, technical difficulties. Uh, normally I uh, can put on my uh, my uh, video and you can actually see me as I present. However, uh, today uh, has been the, uh, the I, we'll call it the Orion's belt, like things have uh, aligned uh, incorrectly. <laughs> and, uh, I can't necessarily see it, but uh, most important, I want to welcome everyone uh, for joining uh, Weiss Financial Ratings uh, and more importantly, the Bloomington, Illinois Public Library uh, for allowing us to come and talk about Medicare. Um, a few things I want to sort of just, uh, you know, get r right off the bat. I wanted to let you know that uh, in regards to uh, what it is uh, that we're doing here this evening. We're going to talk about Medicare. Uh, we're going to talk about um, Medicare uh, Advantage Plan, and we're going to talk about the uh, Medicare Supplement Insurance, better yet known as Medigap. Uh, we're not telling you which one you should choose. We're here just for informational purposes. So therefore, we're going to go over some things that, you know, Medicare actually takes care of and some of the things that Medicare does not take care of. Uh, we'll also talk about the differences between selecting a Medicare Advantage plan uh, to oppose to a Medicare Supplement plan. Uh, one of the things that we'll dive into a little deeper is something that is offered through the Weiss Financial Ratings database that is provided for all patrons of the Bloomington Public Library system for free uh, is the Medigap pricing tool and insurance ratings. And what we'll do is we'll show you how you can just simply go in uh, and based upon one's uh, age, gender, and zip code, uh, you'll be able to pull every single insurance company that is capable of writing a policy in the zip code of 61702. Well, you not only will we be able to pull every insurance company that's capable of writing a policy there, but we'll also give you their safety rating as well as monthly premiums and annual premiums as well as all of the contact information so that if you did see a company that you had some interest in, uh, you'll be able to contact them immediately. So one of the things I wanted to talk about today was Weiss Financial Ratings. Uh, we do not manage any assets uh, whatsoever. Therefore, uh, any information that you're going to receive uh, this evening is going to be independent. It will be unbiased. And we will try to be as accurate as possible. Now, I am not a Medicare expert. Do I know enough to be dangerous? Of course I do. However, uh, you will see throughout the presentation, I will show you how to get in touch with your local ship counselors. Uh, those are the experts uh, in regards to Medicare. They live and they breathe the Medicare uh, you know, spectrum uh, all day, every day. And I do know that Bloomington Public Library System has a ship counselor that actually visits there during open enrollment period. Uh, so again, if any of your questions are not answered this evening, I always recommend talking to your local ship counselor. Now, this Medicare and Medigap discussion is designed to help you navigate through the Medicare maze. Our primary goal is to tell you about the choices you have available to you and help you save as much money as possible. At the end of this talk, you'll be able to download your own customized Medigap report that can help you find and select 
the best Medicare supplement insurance policy for you with the strongest companies for the least amount of money. And you could do it for free with your Bloomington Public Library card. Here's some of the things that we're going to cover this evening. Major expenses Medicare doesn't cover. When is open enrollment and what does that actually mean? Why Medigap can be better than Medicare Advantage. Now, I certainly want to um, read that over again because uh, there is one key word in there. Why Medigap can, it doesn't say it is, why it can be better than Medicare Advantage. And we'll certainly go over that. And how to get lower premiums and save hundreds, uh, even thousands of dollars. Now, one of the nice things is when we're dealing with smaller states or uh, more rural states, uh, usually it's hundreds of dollars we're saving. When we're talking about states like Illinois and New York and Massachusetts and California, uh, most likely you're going to be saving thousands of dollars. That is if Medicare supplement insurance is most appropriate for you. Now, when can you join Medicare? Well, this is a common question that comes up quite often. And the seven-month enrollment period is typically three months before your 65th birthday, the month of your 65th birthday, or three months after your 65th birthday. And the open enrollment period is October 15th to December 7th. It's also important to know if you're still working and covered by insurance, Medicare can supplement your employer coverage as well. Tom, I'm so sorry yes. to interrupt, but we are still on the first loading screen, or at least I am, of your PowerPoint presentation. Okay, then something went wrong. Let's go. So to sorry screen. to interrupt. No, that is quite okay. I want to make sure that uh, we get the uh, right information. Okay. It was at the first screen where you choose the slides, but it didn't. Okay. It didn't go past that one. So let's see. Okay. And Steve, uh, pop up if you're seeing something different than what I saw. Okay. Uh, so... Let's see if this one works. Like, like I said, uh, the trials and tribulations. I could always start over. That's not a problem. Are you? Do you see anything different? Um, it's the same loading screen from PowerPoint where it shows all of the slides, like on the left. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, um. Now it's gone. Okay, so Steve says he was seeing the same thing I was. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't just my computer. All righty. So you're still seeing the same thing? Right now, I there's no screen shared. Okay. I'll let you know if one shows up. Sure. Let me go ahead. Let's see, because there's always one, always more than one way to uh, skin a cat. And we'll certainly do that today if we can. There's your, I, we yep, might. you will. Yep. Okay, great. Okay. 
All righty. Yeah, this is not letting me get out of here. Hmm. Again, I apologize for the delay here. Well, these things happen. We totally understand. Okay, so let's try this. I don't know why it's telling me it cannot open this. So let me just go ahead and do this. Alrighty, let me see if this will Ooh, let let me see if up. let's see if this will let me do it. Okay, uh, there we go. Can everyone see this? Yes, I can see the PowerPoint screen mm -hmm, where it shows like on the left all the tiles. Yes. All right. Awesome. That means uh, we should be able to uh, go from here. Let's see. Okay. Can oh. everyone see? And just okay. like that, you can say it. Yep. Fantastic. I apologize. Do we want to start from the beginning or do we, or do I we think, want? I know you at least got to slide four where it was like what we're going to cover tonight. Sure. So we could certainly do that. Yeah. So here we read through that. Here's what we'll cover. Major expenses Medicare doesn't cover. When is open enrollment and what does that mean? Why Medigap can be better than Medicare Advantage. How to get lower premiums and save hundreds, even thousands of dollars. We went over the open enrollment period, which is the seven-month initial enrollment period, which is three months before your 65th birthday, the month of your 65th birthday, or three months after your 65th birthday. Now, one of the things I did want to bring up that I didn't bring up earlier on is some people ask if they don't enroll, are there any sort of penalties? So, uh, yes, there there typically are some penalties. Um but I would always reach out to your ship counselor to find out uh, possibly what some of those penalties are if you don't enroll into Medicare uh, during that open enrollment period. Now, that open enrollment period is October 15th through December 7th, and that is open enrollment uh, for uh, any sort of supplement or Medicare Advantage. Now, if you have a Medigap plan now and want to change your plan or your insurer, you can do so during the open enrollment each year from October 15th to December 7th. Your coverage will start January 1st. So even if you go in now and you just decide that you know you want to do a, a Medicare supplement plan A, which uh, is not as comprehensive as a, a plan G, uh, just know that the following year, if you feel like you need more comprehensive coverage, you can always go in and you can change the plan. And if you decide that you want to change the insurer, you could do that as well during that open enrollment period of October 15th to December 7th. But know that your changes will not take place until January 1st. Understanding Medicare coverage. Well, we have your Medicare Part A, which is your hospital insurance. That's usually inpatient care. And that would be in the hospital. 
And then, of course, your Medicare Part B, which is your medical insurance. Those are typically your primary care physician wellness visits, as well as the Medicare Part C, the Medicare Advantage. And then, of course, you have your Medicare Part D, which is your prescription drug coverage. Now, Medicare Part A, it covers hospital-related services and emergency care. Like we mentioned, the inpatient hospitalization, home health services, skilled nursing services, hospice. But the one thing that we need to make sure is that Medicare Part A does not cover all of your hospital costs, and it does not cover long-term care insurance. Medicare Part B. It covers all your regular medical care and helps with outpatient services like your doctor's office visits and laboratory services, uh, your ambulatory, as well as your diagnostic services. And most people at this point with their Part A and Part B feel like they're pretty well covered. Medicare does not cover all costs associated with hospital and medical insurance, and it does not include prescription drug coverage. Now, the next graph I'm going to show you uh, is a pretty important one. So here, if we take a look at our Medicare out-of-pocket costs for 2023, uh, here you'll see the hospital deductible is from day one through day 60 is we're responsible for the first $1,600 before Medicare uh, kicks in any expenses. So again, day one through day 60, we are responsible for the first $1,600. Now, if we were in a hospital 61 to 90 days, we would be responsible for the first $400 per day. So I want to just make this clear. If it was $489 a day, we would be responsible to pay the first $400. Medicare would kick in and pay the rest, which is the $89. And let's hope that we don't need, let's hope that we don't need uh, to spend 91 to 150 days in a hospital because we'd be responsible for the first $800 per day. And then, of course, we have our Part B, which is our uh, our doctor office visits. And don't forget, we have an annual deductible of $226 per year. And typically, uh, the monthly premium based upon your income is roughly around $165 a month. Here's other hidden costs of Medicare, and none of these things are covered. Prescription drugs, vision, emergency care abroad, dental, and hearing aids. None of these are covered. When Medicare was established back in 1965, it was never meant to cover all of the medical care for your senior years. It was intended to cover only the most basic of needs. You have choices in regards to your health care, and you can stick with a Medicare Part A and Part B, or if you can purchase uh, additional coverage, whether it be the Medicare Advantage or a Medicare Supplement Policy. You can make this decision based on your unique health care needs. The two choices to fill the gap would be Medicare Advantage Part C or Medicare Supplemental Insurance, better yet known as Medigap. Medicare Advantage Part C. Here's a common misconception. The coverage is provided by a private insurance and is limited to a defined network of doctors and providers. So uh, Medicare Advantage is not a part of Medicare, the government. It is a private insurance. It combines your Part A, which is your hospital insurance, and your Part B, Medicare. And oftentimes, uh, one of the big lures to Medicare Advantage is it does cover your Part D prescription drug coverage. Medicare Supplement Insurance, Medigap. 
Now, the major difference is, is this actually covers the deductibles, the co-payments, and the co-insurance. So that's $1,600 or the $400 per day uh, or the $800 per day is typically covered uh, so that you're not being hit with any tremendous bills. It's designed to fill in the gaps that Medicare Part A and Part B does not cover. Now, if we wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison, here's Medigap and Medicare Advantage. Now, the original Medicare and Medicare supplement, you'll typically pay higher premiums, but there are no co-pays. You have the freedom to choose doctors. There's no referrals necessary. Some routine services are not covered, like vision and hearing. And you're covered anywhere in the U.S. and six plans offer coverage abroad. Now, on the Medicare Advantage, there's generally lower premiums, but you still do have co-pays. You may be restricted to a network of doctors, most likely in your service area, and you may need referrals for specialists. One of the nice things about Medicare Advantage, it may include extra benefits like vision, hearing, and a fitness membership. Now, one of the negatives is outside of your service area, you're limited to emergency services only. Here's secret number one. Medigap plans offer identical coverage. There are currently 10 Medigap plans, each known by a letter A to N, and two plans F and G each have an additional high deductible option. For every lettered plan, every insurer that offers that plan provides the same exact benefits. The plans are regulated by the government, so the coverage within each lettered plan is the same regardless of which insurer you choose to go with. That means all plan A's have the same exact coverage, all plan B's are the same, all plan F's are the same, and all plan G's are the same, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can pick the plan that has the coverage that you want. You can compare one insurer to another, and you can pick the plan that has the best rate. Questions to ask yourself when picking a Medigap plan, if a Medigap plan is appropriate for you. What is your income? Well, using your own customized Medigap report, you can shop for a Medigap plan that has the most benefits that will fit within your own budget. Do you think you will want or need nursing care? We always say, look at your family's medical history. If your parents or grandparents needed nursing care, you may also need similar care in the future. Do you travel a lot overseas? If so, you can get coverage for emergency care in foreign countries with plan C through G, M, N, N. Deciding between Medigap plans. Paying a higher premium for more comprehensive coverage or paying less for your premium and potentially paying more out of pocket. Here's a quick comparison of plans A through N. As you could see, plan A is uh, probably the least comprehensive. And when we go through the most comprehensive plan F and plan G, all the most comprehensive Obviously, Plan A, when we take a look at the uh, annual premium, it's obviously a lot less expensive. But Plan F, Plan G, uh, they are the most comprehensive. And then, of course, you have your Plan F and Plan G high deductible as well. Secret number two, Medigap plans are standard, but the rates are not. Insurance premiums can vary thousands of dollars a year for the same exact coverage. Here, we have a female age 65 living in Bloomington, Illinois. Now, when we go with the most comprehensive coverage plan G, the highest premium insurance company is $4,493 a year. 
Now, that same Plan G, the lowest premium company is $1,285. That's a difference of $3,208 a year. Now, I did want to point out, I'm going to mention some names of companies. That does not mean that we say that you should purchase them. We're not saying that you should run from them. We're just simply stating so that you know exactly where we pulled this data. And this data was actually ran today. Uh, the Plan G highest premium, this was United Healthcare through the AARP. And this Plan G, the lowest premium, was through Oxford. Now we have a male, age 68, living in Bloomington, Illinois. Plan G's highest premium, $5,067 for the year. And Plan G's lowest premium, which was $1,452. Now, both companies I used the same. The highest premium was the United Healthcare through AARP. And the lowest premium was Oxford Health. This was a savings of $3,615 for the year. Now let's say we're a couple, age 65 and 68, living in Bloomington, Illinois. Now that Plan G highest premium combined was $9,560. The lowest premium combined was $2,737. That was a savings for that couple of $6,823 simply because they went on and they utilized this pricing tool and they were actually able to get uh, a company uh, that was a third of the price. How safe is your insurer? Weiss safety ratings. Now, one of the other things I did want to point out, Weiss is pure fundamentals. So if the numbers are there, that is where we go with our ratings. We don't go off of hypotheticals and we don't go after, after forecasts. We simply look at the numbers and the numbers typically don't lie. And obviously we keep it really simplistic here. Uh, we like to use the traffic light model. Obviously, if it's green, we're very much in favor. That means the numbers were very, very favorable. Uh, and then, of course, you have uh, your C, which is yellow, which is yield. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, run to it. It certainly doesn't mean run away from it. It just means that the numbers weren't quite where we wanted them to be uh, to give them a very strong safety rating. And then, obviously, uh, the red uh, would be uh, weak or very weak, and we consider those uh, that you may want to start looking elsewhere. Now, just as an FYI, uh, the United Healthcare through AARP was rated a C, and the Oxford, which was the lowest premium, was actually rated B plus. So not only did they pay a third of what somebody else may have if they use the United Healthcare through AARP, but they also got a stronger safety rating as well. Safer insurers are not necessarily the most expensive. There was a, a, a prime example right there. Higher premiums don't mean you're getting coverage from a stronger, more financially stable insurance provider. And of course, our last secret is you can make the choice. The choice is always yours. More coverage for less. Reduce your premium. Balance the financial safety of your insurer with your choice of plan. And we're going to go over the four secrets we spoke about. One, Medigap plans offer identical coverage. So remember, that plan G, the coverage inside both plans has to be identical. The government mandates that. The only thing the government has not mandated is how much those insurance companies can actually charge. Medigap plans are standard, but the rates are not. Safer insurers are not necessarily more expensive. And of course, you can make the choice.
Weiss Financial Ratings Medigap Report helps you make the right choice for you and your specific situation. You can pick the right coverage. You can pick the lowest rate. You can save valuable time and money. And you can pick the best and most affordable plan from all available providers customized just for you. And you get it all for free with your library card because your library subscribes to this helpful tool. Here are some of the common questions. One, eligibility for plan C and F. This comes up quite often. If you were eligible for Medicare after January 1st, 2020, Plan C, Plan F, and high deductible Plan F will not be available to you. If you were eligible for Medicare prior to January 1st, 2020, you can continue to enroll in Plan C and Plan F and high deductible Plan F. An alternative, consider Plan D instead of Plan C or Plan G instead of Plan F. The only difference? is your $226 Part B deductible. The solutions offered by Weiss Ratings Customized Medigap Report is to help you find and select the best Medigap policy for you with the strongest companies for the least amount of money. Naturally, everybody's every person's situation is unique. So if you have more questions, I always urge you, one, Talk to your doctor about your future health care needs and make sure that the plan you're selecting will give you the coverage that you need. Nobody knows about your current situation more than your primary care physician. Also, another nugget I'd always like to drop, it's always a good idea to talk to the office manager at your physician's office. They typically know the insurance companies that are much easier to deal with, especially if you know, you have a procedure that needs to happen uh, and some insurance companies make you jump through hoops to get approvals for those procedures. Uh, typically, the office manager knows the, the companies uh, that are, uh, you know, easy to deal with and easy to work with. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure that your health care is always the number one priority. Talk to the insurance company you have selected and make sure that your specific questions are answered. They're not there to sell you. They're simply there to answer all of your questions. And I always recommend whenever you pull up the Medigap report, select two or three companies to call and make sure that you have all of your questions answered before you make your final decision. Also, like I had mentioned earlier on today, you can also talk to a SHIP counselor. That's your state health insurance assistance program counselor to get personalized one-on-one -on -one Medicare counseling either over the phone or in person. I know Bloomington actually offers that. You can locate a SHIP counselor in your area by visiting this website and it's www.shiptacenter.org and just find your local Medicare help. They are the sharpshooters. They are the experts. They live and they breathe Medicare uh, all day, every day. And they typically know many of the local insurance companies. And they can also help you in the way of, um, you know, typically some underwriting is different than others. Um, and usually uh, before the age of 70, uh, usually underwriting is quite simple. Uh, however, you know, from time to time, some insurance companies are a little bit more stringent in regards to their underwriting. Uh, and you just want to make sure that when you talk to your ship counselor, uh, you might want to ask him or her some of those questions. How to get your own Medigap report? Well, we make it super simplistic here. All you have to do is go to your Bloomington Public Library website, which is bloomingtonlibrary.org. Click on the online resources tab and simply type Weiss in the search bar and then click on Weiss Financial Ratings. Uh, and from there, you'll just simply need to enter your library card number and PIN if you're connecting from home. Click on the Medigap tab. It's the gray bar on the right hand side and simply enter your information and download your report. Well, 
Thank you for visiting the Bloomington Public Library website uh, to download your own customized Medigap report. Um, so if you have any questions, I would always recommend this. I am the strongest advocate for your reference librarians there, especially in Bloomington. You have a fantastic staff there. If you have questions and you need to uh, have your questions answered in regards to navigating the Weiss Financial Ratings database or any database that's provided there at Bloomington Public Library, I highly recommend you reach out to your reference librarian and they'll be more than happy uh, to walk you through that. Uh, or if you have questions in regards to sitting and meeting with a SHIP counselor, they could certainly point you in the right direction as well.